What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Critical Overload here. We're going to talk about Scream 7 in this video mostly here today. But before I get into that, I want to talk about the potential reboot of Buffy the Vampire Slayer or sequel continuation that could still be on its way from Disney since it wasn't actually officially ever canceled. It was specifically described as being on pause. So Kendara Blake might have the best sequel concept for the Buffyverse to return if Disney again ever wants to bring the Buffyverse back because the show was not officially or the concept idea was not officially canceled. It was announced as being on pause from one of the executive producers. So Kendara Blake has two projects already released or two novels, I should say, one called In Every Generation and the other is called One Girl in All the World. Both novels take place 15 years after the collapse of Sunnydale. It has been rebuilt since then and we focus on Frankie, Frankie Rosenberg, who we know is the daughter of Willow Rosenberg, who will be our first witch and slayer all at once. So in this story, 15 years after the events of the finale of Buffy, after Buffy, Faith, and other Slayers go missing at an annual Slayer Fest event, Frankie and a whole new generation of Scoobies, al Scoobies along with Spike, who returns as Frankie's Watcher, work together to battle the new evil in Sunnydale and get Buffy and the other Slayers back. Now, there's even a charm Willow has cast on Spike that makes him older, so people believe that he is a Watcher, which could make it easy for James Monsters to return without de-aging him. I bring this up because last year it was announced again that the reboot show was paused, but a rumor I've now discovered says that in every generation will end up getting adapted into a series. This comes from Sidetrack, and I'm not saying it's confirmed or anything or even true for that matter, but time will tell. I'll leave a link to their video in the description and I'll keep digging to see if this is true or has any truth to it because I think that what she has written in these two novels, while it has some things that I would tweak when you adapt it into a show this is the best Buffy sequel concept I've seen in recent memory it's a seer it's a story that doesn't require uh Buffy to be present since she's missing and it would leave the door open for Sarah Michelle Gellar to return when the character is found which I think you could ultimately convince Sarah Michelle Gellar and even Eliza Dushku to return to their iconic roles and it could be on the air for maybe three seasons max because Kendara Blake she has a trilogy in mind so she's already released two two of the plan two books from the planned trilogy the only thing that's left now is the trilogy finale is disney waiting for that to come out before they officially move forward and adapt these books into a series we will see but i will point out this her second book has gotten even better reviews than the first book now jumping into scream 7 so rumor was that it would begin filming by the fall because that's what Paramount wants, allegedly, according to viewer non. Jeff Snyder actually recently, during a edition of the Hot Mic, even tossed around the possibility of Paramount not even wanting to wait for Jenna Ortega if she can't do the film, which to me was like, that's that's not going to happen. Jenna definitely will be involved. Jenna is probably about to work on Beetlejuice 2 this summer. You have Mason, who has that Y2K movie. And more recently, we've learned that Radio Silence is going to be filming an untitled Universal Monster movie this summer. But here's the thing. That movie isn't actually untitled. It was actually leaked or revealed a month prior even like a day or two before Scream 6 officially dropped. The title of the film is Abducting Abigail, and Production Weekly has it listed as Dracula's Daughter for the working title. Guy Busick was reported to have had a hand in writing this project as well. Melissa Barrera has now joined the, the Abducting Abigail project, so she's reuniting with Radio Silence, and she will be shooting this with them, taking a break from Scream just as much as they are taking a break from Scream. So with this project beginning to film in May, you have several stars that were part of Scream and Six, booked and busy, but Paramount wants the film shooting by October, allegedly. Again, I made a comment before stating that the media news to us is not news to Paramount and Spyglass, of course, or anyone else involved with the Scream movies that have yet to announce Scream 7. They know what Radio Silence is up to. They know what Jenna and the rest of the cast are up to, which would explain why Scream 7 hasn't been announced. If all of them were booked for the summer, it only makes the October rumor that much more believable. However, what it also seems to do is deduce the likelihood or decrease the likelihood of Radio Silence not being able to direct Scream 7 because of this Universal film. It begins shooting in May, so they'd be free if they don't commit to anything else and if they want to because they aren't obligated to do more Scream movies. That's the other important thing to remember. If they wanted to start shooting in October, Abducting Abigail would already be done filming way before October. Radio Silence has made comments in the past about wanting the series to continue even if they aren't around, but that mostly could have been because they aren't able to again flat out say, yes, we will be back for Scream 7 for contractual reasons. 
But meanwhile, everyone else that should know already knows that they'll be back. Similar with our writers who know that they'll be back, who have also talked about loving fresh blood touching the franchise. But that, again, could be a way of making a comment that doesn't go against any contractual obligations they have to not talk about or confirm their return to Scream 7. Because there's some things that they want to get in place and they want to make an announcement all at once. But everyone, again, who knows they'll be back already knows they will return. Point being, it's highly likely that everyone will return to shoot this movie in October after they get done working on their busy summer plans. It doesn't mean that they are returning, though. However, it would appear that everybody is just simply taking a break from Scream, including Paramount, since they haven't announced Seven. We know Six was profitable enough to make Seven. And unless Radio Silence and the writers are being replaced, I would think they would have announced Scream Seven by now. With the lack of announcement and all the other variables at play, having people involved with Scream 5 and 6 working with Radio Silence on this new movie, it would appear to me that they will wait for Radio Silence. Spyglass and Paramount are going to wait for Radio Silence, but I could be wrong because there's always a chance that they will be replaced. But it doesn't seem that that is going to be the case. We could very well much so still have new directors and new writers by the time this is announced. But given how things are lining up and way we're getting these announcements and this media coverage about the stars working on different projects together, it would appear, it would appear that they're just simply waiting. The film could still shoot in October once everyone is done with their busy summer plans because there's several of them working on different projects right now. Now, Drew Barrymore made a comment about Casey Becker returning. She said, with good writing, you can make anything happen. Hear me and hear me well. I would rather have Stu Mocker back. <laughs> and I say that with no hesitation because me and many of you, all of you, saw Casey's whole guts hanging out. Also, yes, if it were a new nightmare approach, sure, bring her back. However, that's not what they were referring to. They weren't talking about that at all whatsoever. They made a comment about doctors working magic and Casey being alive. And it's a whole ass no for me now and forever. Casey Becker is dead. That's one of the most iconic opening sequences to a horror movie we've ever seen. I feel as though this is one of those rare occasions where I would say that if this person were alive, it would completely lessen the effectiveness of that opening. I mean, I've already seen it so many times, but then if you toss in there that she didn't even die, it's completely going to lessen anything about that sequence when I go and rewatch the series. She's dead. Let her stay dead. If you guys haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe, turn on post notifications, and there is a video in the description. I will have links on my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, to let me know if there are any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.